later on today, I'm going to introduce the midterm exam. So in the interest of saving time, uh, we're not going to have a discussion this week. I'm just going to lecture. So let's take a look at uh, this week's questions. Number one, what's the first sign that you noticed of Eve's change after she eats the forbidden fruit, which is um, we're looking at book nine around line 794. Question two, do you agree with Adam's reason for eating the forbidden fruit? Why or why not? Question three, how are the inner states of Adam and Eve changed after eating the forbidden fruit? So is there something inside them in their mind or their spirit that changes? What about their behavior? Is the way that they act different? And can you give some examples, for example, from these parts? Question four, how would you explain the logic of original sin being passed down through the generations according to this part of the poem? Do you think it makes sense? Why or why not? And question five, do you think the events of Paradise Lost, the whole poem, support its moral, its message, its moral message, as explained at the very end of the poem, why or why not? So let's look at question one. How does Eve change after eating the forbidden fruit? So this is on page 32. Uh, we ended last week just before or just as she eats the forbidden fruit. Uh, and the first reaction is from the earth. Earth felt the wound and nature from her seat sighing through all her works gave signs of woe. So nature is sighing with signs of sadness that all was lost. Back to the thicket or the, the grove of trees, Chu Cong, slunk the guilty serpent and well might. So like there's nothing more for him to do. For Eve intent now wholly on her taste not else regarded, so she didn't care about anything else. Such delight till then as seemed in fruit she never tasted. Seems like she has never eaten the fruit so delicious before. Whether true or fancied so, maybe it's true, maybe it's her imagination. Fancy means imagination. If you took my British literature course last semester, we talked about fancy. Uh, when we were talking about romanticism, Lamanjui. Through expectation high of knowledge. So maybe she is imagining this because she expects something very great from this new knowledge of good and evil. Nor was Godhead from her thought. So she was also thinking about whether she really would become as powerful as God or as powerful as the angels. Greedily, she engorged without restraint. Engorge means to eat with big mouthfuls. In Chinese, I think we say da dan, like 一个口一个眼. And knew not eating death. So while she was eating, she did not think of death. Satiate at length, so finally, after a long time, she's satisfied. And heightened as with wine, so it's like she's drunk. Jocund and boon, merry and jolly. Okay. In Chinese, we usually think of these two words as both being happy, but that's not true. Merry is what we usually think of as being happy. Jolly is like... Um, an energetic kind of happiness, like you're willing to sing and dance and make jokes. So now she's both. It's like she's drunk. Thus to herself, she pleasingly began. So she started to talk to herself and she likes the sound of her voice pleasingly. So already there's a change, right? 
now she she's eating without caring about anything else she doesn't care about god's warning she's greedily eating that can't be good and then she acts like she's drunk and she likes the sound of her own voice so now she also is kind of vain with some vanity zilian and then notice what she says oh sovereign virtuous precious of all trees in paradise she's praising the tree if you remember last week when satan was trying to corrupt her part of what he said was to praise the tree and to praise the fruit and here after eating the first thing that eve does is also to praise the tree Yeah, so these are just some of the signs that Eve has changed after breaking God's only law. Uh, and then she repeats the logic that Satan gave her. By thee, or dieted by thee, so after eating you, she's talking to the fruit, I grow mature in knowledge as the gods who all things know. So she's also comparing herself to the angels. Though others envy what they cannot give, for had the gift been theirs, so if they had had the chance to eat it, it had not here thus grown. That's, I, right. Uh, so now she's thanking the fruit for giving her knowledge equal to the gods, which is exactly what Satan was saying. And then look at this, 811. So now she, fi she finally remembers God said, don't do this. So she says to herself, and I perhaps am secret. Here it says secret means unseen. Maybe God didn't see. Heaven is high, high and remote to see from thence distinct each thing on earth. So heaven is far away. Maybe God didn't see me one person breaking the rules in chinese we say uh and other care care means concerns so like other business perhaps may have diverted from continual watch our great forbidder so maybe god was busy doing something else and he didn't see so those are some of the changes that we immediately see in Eve as soon as she eats the forbidden fruit. Um, single minded focus, ignoring everything else, um, praising the fruit in the tree. She loves the sound of her own voice. She's eating very greedily. Uh, and then she's thinking, maybe God didn't see me break the rules. Maybe he was busy. Yeah, so now she's like um, rationalizing and justifying to herself. Like he, she's now giving some excuses and trying to defend herself. All of these are very small-minded thoughts. It's not something we would expect from a pure human being. Okay, question two. Adam's reason for eating the forbidden fruit. So before we get to Adam, uh, how do we get from Eve to Adam? Line 816, Eve is still talking to herself. But to Adam, in what sort shall I appear? So how should I present myself to Adam? Now that I am changed, how should I act in front of him? Shall I to him make known as yet my change and give him to partake full happiness with me? So should I let him know? Should I share the fruit with him? Or rather not, but keep the odds of knowledge in my power without co-partner. So now she's talking about advantage. Should I share the fruit with him or should I keep it to myself and use my knowledge to control him? Uh, and what will she do by controlling him? 
So to add what wants in female sex, so to make the woman equal to the man, the more to draw his love, to make him love me more, and render me more equal and perhaps a thing not undesirable, sometimes superior. Sometime means maybe. So by controlling him, maybe I can make him love me more. Maybe we will be equal. Maybe I will be better than him. For inferior, who is free? How can you be free if you are not, if somebody else is better than you? This sounds very similar to what Satan was saying in book one. He would rather rule in hell and not follow God in heaven. He, he, Satan does not accept that he is inferior. And Eve says the same thing. How can I be free if I am inferior? So that's her first idea. Maybe I'll control Adam. But then she says, this may be well, but what if God have seen and death ensue? So what if God does punish me? Then I shall be no more. And Adam wedded to another Eve shall live with her enjoying I extinct. A death to think. So if God does know that I broke his law, and he does cause me to die. Then Adam would marry another woman and he would be happy, but I would be dead. And she says that this is a death to think. It's a terrible thought to her. Confirmed, then I resolve. Resolve means I have decided. Adam shall share with me in bliss or woe. So I'm going to share the fruit with him. So if I'm happy, we'll both be happy, but if I'm punished, we will both be punished. Did you notice her logic? Uh, the idea is if I'm punished, I want Adam to also be punished. I don't want him to be happy with another woman. She's jealous. Which of course is not a holy feeling at all, not a pure emotion. 基本上就他就是他就是要把亚当拖下水了。And then she says, "So dear, I love him, that with him all deaths I could endure, without him live no life." Uh, so I don't know whether this is really love. It's more like possessive love, 占有欲 Yeah. Okay. So. This is what she's thinking when she goes to tell Adam what happened. Uh, and then she goes to do, find Adam. She tells him what happened. Uh, and then Adam thinks to himself, what should I do? So starting line 904. Sorry, no, sorry. Now here he's talking to Eve. Sorry. Inward silence broke. So after thinking about it, uh, he says to Eve, again, he starts traditionally praising Eve as a wonderful woman. Uh, and then he says, how art thou lost? Line 900. How did you uh, become seduced by Satan? Like what happened? 904. Some cursed fraud of enemy hath beguiled thee. Satan must have tricked you. Yet unknown. So I don't yet know how he tricked you, but he must, must have tricked you. And me with thee hath ruined. And it's not just you. I will also be doomed. For, because, with thee certain my resolution is to die. Whatever happens to you happens to me. If you chose to eat it, I will eat it too. How can I live without thee? How forego thy sweet converse? Forego means to give up. Converse means conversation. How forego thy sweet converse and love so dearly joined? 
to live again in these wild woods forlorn. Forlorn means having lost someone or something. Should God create another Eve and I another rib afford, yet loss of thee would never from my heart. Even if God created another woman, yet having lost you, this feeling would never disappear from my heart. No, no, I feel the link of nature draw me, flesh of flesh, bone of my bone thou art. So God created Eve from Adam's body, from his rib, Logu. So he's saying that this connection pulls me to you. You were made from me, so what happens to you, I feel uh, I must follow you. And from thy state, or that your situation, mine never shall be parted or separated, bliss or woe, happy or sad. Um, and this is also the logic of a traditional Christian marriage, right? Through sickness and health, happiness and sadness, uh, the, the two partners will always stay together. Uh, so, hmm. ah, I was right the first time. He, he's talking to himself. Sorry, sorry. He's thinking all of this to himself. And then he, he decides uh, here that he's going to eat the forbidden fruit. And so he turns to Eve and basically says, OK, fine, give it to me. I will also eat it. So back to this question. Do you agree with Adam's reason for eating the forbidden fruit? Basically, I love you too much. Whatever happens to you will happen to me. If I lose you, even if I find, even if God gives me another woman, I will always miss you. Like he's a real romantic, right? A really romantic guy. Um, and like on the one hand, usually when somebody in real life says something like this, uh, their friends will say, uh, don't sacrifice yourself for somebody who's not worthy. There are other people that you can uh, have a relationship with. Your life is not over. You still have a future ahead of you. But in this case, Adam and Eve are literally the only two humans. Adam doesn't know whether God will create another woman for him. So, if he loses Eve, he is literally alone in the world. It's like he has no other options. Another way to think about this is that Adam has never lost anyone before. This is his first heartbreak. This is his first encounter with loss. It's like uh, for us, it's like the first time our dog dies, right? That kind of tragedy or the first time uh, we lose a family member. It's for us, we know that this will happen in our life, so we can try to prepare for it. We probably can't actually prepare, but we can try. But for Adam, he has never even thought about this possibility. The entire situation is completely new for him. He has no mental preparation. So I think in, in this case, it does make sense for Adam to have this kind of reaction. Losing the only other human being on Earth is not something that he wants to risk. It's not something that he's willing to suffer. But you are not Adam. Don't sacrifice yourself. There are more people. Question three, the inner states of Adam and Eve. So Adam also eats the fruit and then some weird stuff starts happening. Book nine, line 1008. Okay. As with new wine intoxicated both, so after he eats, they are both, they both feel drunk. They swim in mirth, mirth means happiness, and fancy that they feel divinity within them breeding wings wherewith to scorn the earth. It feels like there is some kind of Holy Spirit inside them spreading its wings and taking them away from the surface of the earth. They feel like they have gotten more holy and more powerful. But that false 
fruit. Uh, false means uh, cheating, fraudulent. Far other operation first displayed. So the fruit started doing something else to them. Carnal desire inflaming. So giving them burning desire for each other, for their bodies. Uh, he on Eve began to cast lascivious eyes. Lascivious means wanting to have sex. She him as wantonly repaid. So they both look at each other in lust. In lust they burn. Uh, and then basically they say they call each other sexually beautiful, not just beautiful, but like sexy. Uh, and then uh, if I remember correctly, they go somewhere, they hide from the sky. And there they're, they, they're filled of love and love's disport took largely. Basically, they have sex. Until they fall asleep. Because they're tired. Now, this part is kind of controversial because the only way for Adam and Eve to have children is to have sex. So why is it a sin? And um, classical religious scholars said that before eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve also had sex, but it didn't feel like this. It wasn't powered by sexual desire. It was just another fun activity like uh, playing sports or running around or having a conversation. It didn't feel any different. The sin is not in the sex. The sin is in the sexual desire and the the sexual possessiveness uh, and focusing on the body and not on the person. So that's uh, one change. And then after they wake up, uh, soon found their eyes how opened and their minds how darkened. So they see more of how the world works, but at the same moment, their minds are drifting further from God. Innocence that as a veil had shadowed them from knowing ill was gone. So remember, the fruit is called the knowledge of good and evil. Satan kept saying, you will know how to become like gods. That's the good part. But now they're also starting to see the evil part. So the innocence that had protected them from knowing about evil was gone. The only thing they had left was confidence. Uh, sorry, and they also lost these things. They lost just confidence. They lost their native righteousness. They lost their honor and they were now naked left to guilty shame. Um, so now they're thinking. Uh, they start to feel all of these negative moral emotions. And then Adam says to Eve, oh Eve, in evil hour, uh, so unlucky hour, thou didst give ear to that false worm, the serpent. Uh, and then we ate and we opened our eyes and we find both good and evil, good lost and evil got. So at the same moment that they can see good and evil, they see that they have lost the good and they only have, they have acquired, they have gained the evil. Uh, and then Adam is saying, how can I face God like this? Because now he inside of himself, he's full of shame. Uh, and so because he's full of shame, he says, cover me, ye pines, zhen shu, ye cedars. I can't remember what kind of tree a cedar is. Uh, with innumerable boughs, which means branches, hide me where I may never see them more. So he wants to try to hide from God because he feels so shameful. And then he thinks maybe we should hide our bodies from each other. Uh, devise means think. Devise what best may for the present serve to hide the parts of each from other that seem most to shame obnoxious and unseemliest seen. 
So he's saying maybe we should invent some clothes. Uh, and they only think about this because they now have an idea that it's shameful to be naked and that it's shameful to feel sexual desire. So they they feel the urge to hide their bodies. Uh, and then Milton says a lot of other stuff. What's the second part? Uh, book 10, 125 to 156. OK, so book 10. Adam is saying uh, to God. Oh, heaven, so he's talking to God. In evil straight this day I stand before my judge. Straight means a tricky situation. Either to undergo myself the total crime. Or to accuse my other self, the partner of my life. So at this point, either I will take all the blame or I have to blame Eve also. Uh, who's failing while her faith to me remains, I should conceal and not expose to blame by my complaint. So he knows that because she is his wife, as long as she's still by his side, he really should try to protect her. But the fact that he has this thought makes it a possibility. This exactly is an example of the knowledge of good and evil. He knows he should not try to blame Eve. But he also knows that he could do it if he wanted to. It's a question of knowledge. He knows what is good and what is evil. And because he knows, he now has a choice. Uh, and then he, he, you know, he says, though should I hold my peace, yet thou wouldst easily detect what I conceal. Even if I don't say what I want to say, you, God, would know what I'm thinking, what I'm hiding. And so he says it anyway. This woman whom thou madest to be my help and gavest me as thy perfect gift, so good, so fit, so acceptable, so divine, this Eve that you gave me, that from her hand I could suspect no ill, and what she did, whatever in itself, her doing seemed to justify the deed. She gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So at the end of the day, Adam does still blame Eve. You, he says to God, you created this perfect woman. I had no reason to suspect her. I had no reason to be careful around her. And yet it is this woman who gave me the forbidden fruit. To eat. And then God has a really legendary response. Was she thy God that her thou didst obey before his voice? Like Adam, dude. Who's your God? Am I your God or is Eve your God? Who do you, are you supposed to listen to, me or her? Or was she made thy guide superior or but equal that to her thou didst resign thy manhood in the place wherein God set thee above her made of thee and for thee? So did I create Eve to be your superior? Was she supposed to lead you or are you both equal? No, I created Adam, you, to be her leader. So how can you blame her for something that you did? Uh, this brings up another debate about Paradise Lost, which is gender equality in the poem. It is true, God creates Adam first and also creates uh, Eve to be Adam's companion, and Adam is supposed to teach and guide and protect Eve. But like in certain parts of the poem that I did not select for you, we also see, well, I guess I did select for you. We also see them debating whether they should work together or they should work separately. And that debate is very equal among uh, the two sides. Eve has her reasons. Adam listens to her reasons. Adam doesn't just say, uh, God created me to be the leader, so you have to listen to me. They did have an actual debate. And Adam 
followed Eve anyway, even though he won the debate. So God created man to be the leader of women in the story, yes. But the poem itself gives us a complete person as a woman. There's a difference between God's design and Milton's design or the way that Milton interprets God's design. But so anyway, here God is saying like you're supposed to lead her and protect her. How can you blame her for something that you did? Uh, and then. Skipping a few lines. This is still Adam. Now Adam is complaining to God. Did I request thee, maker from my clay to mold me man? Did I solicit thee from darkness to promote me or here place in this delicious garden? Adam is saying, I didn't ask to be created. I didn't beg to be born. You created me. You gave me free will. How can you blame me for using the free will that you gave me? Uh, this is an argument that teenagers love to use against their parents. I didn't ask to be your child. Why are you so mad at me? Right. Uh, and so this tells you like how childish Adam is being. The point, of course, is not who decided to create Adam. The point is now that Adam is here, what does he choose to do? And Adam is saying, like, you gave us free will. You gave us a law that was too hard to follow. And because we could not follow it, we broke the law. And now you're punishing us for doing something that we could not avoid. Um, yeah, so that's basically what this whole thing is saying. Um, so that those are some examples of how um, Adam and Eve change after eating the forbidden fruit. Right? They start feeling sexual desire. They start feeling shame. Adam starts trying to blame other people, blame God uh, for his own choice. You know, all of these are very negative behaviors. OK, sexual desire is technically not a negative behavior. It's only negative if we have the possibility of not feeling sexual desire. But unfortunately, uh, we today don't have that choice. Um, but for Adam and Eve, it is considered sinful behavior. Question four, the logic of original sin. Uh, and that's the next part that I was just going to look at here. Posterity stands cursed. Posterity means later generations. Uh, this is still Adam talking. Fair patrimony that I must leave ye sons. A patrimony, uh, patrimony is the legacy that a father leaves their son. Uh, originally it meant money, but it can now also include reputation or some kind of uh, intangible legacy assets, that kind of thing. So he's saying this is the kind of thing that I leave to you, my sons. Uh, original sin he's talking about. Oh, were I able to waste it all myself and leave ye none? If only I could uh, pay all of the penalty for original sin and you would not have to pay any of the you would not have to suffer the punishment. So disinherited, how would you bless me now your curse? If I could pay all of the penalty for original sin, you would bless me instead of curse me like you are cursing me. He's imagining his future sons are blaming him. He's imagining that if he could pay all of the penalty, his future sons would thank him instead of blame him. Ah, why should all mankind for one man's fault thus guiltless be condemned if guiltless? This is the exact question people have always been asking about this idea of original sin. Why 
if it's only Adam and Eve who made the mistake, does all of humankind have to pay for it? Why should all mankind for one man's fault does guiltless be condemned? But then Adam answers his own question. But from me, what can proceed? Like what can I produce that is not all corrupt? Both mind and will depraved. Will is uh, here it means like uh, the capacity to make decisions. Uh, you can think of it as a kind of spirit. Not to do only, but to will the same. Uh, do here means act. Not to do only, but to will the same with me. So if I can only produce children who are also corrupted by knowledge of good and evil, how can they do anything different from what I do? How can they choose in any way different from how I choose? And therefore, how can they then acquitted stand in sight of God? How can they be blameless before God? Right, so that's, we can talk a bit more about this. Uh, the logic of original sin. So here the idea is that uh, Adam and Eve both already now have knowledge of good and evil. They, it, they cannot have that taken away. They can't give it up. They can't like cut out that part of their mind that has this knowledge. Once you have it, you can't forget it. So their children will also have the same knowledge. Uh, and the question here is why? Adam simply says, because I am corrupt, therefore I can only produce corrupt children. But we can think about specifically why that's true. Um, so one reason we already saw sexual desire. Previously, Adam and Eve could have children without feeling sinful sexual desire. Now they cannot. Every child that they now have will be born from an act of sin. Um, another way to think about this is that. Uh, I guess today we would call this nurture versus nature. In terms of nurture, when they have children and they are raising their children, how do they teach their children? What kind of behavior, what kind of language will they pass on to their children? All of these behaviors and, and use of language will be corrupted with the knowledge of good and evil. We've already seen examples of how knowing what is good and what is bad has already started to change the way they think and to change the way they behave. So simply by being a parent to their children, their children will also pick up these uh, differences, these actions and words that are related to what is good and what is bad, or that are that have been influenced by what is good and what is bad. And then, of course, we have the nature argument, xian tian de. Um, in those days, they would talk about the sin of sexual desire and uh, how children born from sin will also have sin. Today, we would talk about genetics, jing. If this fruit gives them knowledge of good and evil by changing something in within them, that change will also be passed down uh, through the physical act of creating a child and giving birth will be passed down to the child. Uh, because a child is made entirely of the body parts of the mother and father, mostly the mother, but also some parts from the father. It's 100% built uh, so their children will be 100% built from a corrupted body and a corrupted mind. Uh, so in terms of like biology, their children will also have been changed by um, having eaten from the forbidden fruit. 
So like these are the the common ways of understanding why original sin is passed down. It doesn't just stop with Adam and Eve. This is very important. It will be part of the midterm exam. Uh, and then the last question, do the events of the poem fit the moral? So let's look at the moral. Like what is the lesson that the poem is uh, using as the conclusion? So this is Adam talking to uh, the angel Michael. I think last week I, I mentioned that uh, there was an angel who is explaining the war in heaven to Adam and Eve. The explaining angel is Gabriel. Michael only comes down to kick them out of Eden, right? Michael is the angel who threw Satan down into hell. He's like a warrior angel. So you can think of him as like a police officer, right? When God needs somebody with, uh, when he God needs a punch, right? When he needs a weapon, he sends Michael. So Michael is the angel who kicks Adam and Eve out of Eden. And so here, um, after giving Adam some advice, Adam uh, comes to a conclusion about what he should do in the future. Henceforth, which means from now on, I learn that to obey is best. And love with fear the only God. So love God, but also fear God. And remember that he is the only God. To walk as in his presence, so always behave like he is next to us. Ever, which means always, to observe his providence. Providence is God's plan, so always follow God's plan. And on him soul depend, only depend on God, who is merciful over all his works, uh, with good still overcoming evil, and by small accomplishing great things, so now he's saying we should only always follow God because God is merciful. Uh, God always lets good overcome evil, uses small things to accomplish great things, uses weak things to subvert strong things. Subvert is dian fu. Uh, and to let the meek, which means the low and the weak, to win over the worldly wise. Worldly wise does not mean wise. It means cynical. Uh, uh, I, there, was a, there was a better translation, I can't remember. Like someone who uh, always tries to work for their own self-interest using the rules of the situation instead of looking at like what is the right thing to do or the holy thing to do. Worldly. Right, uh, And then that suffering for truth's sake is fortitude to highest victory. So if you suffer for the truth, in the end you will win a great victory. And to the faithful, death the gate of life. So for people who believe in God, death is the doorway to life. Uh, in this case, I think he means heaven. Uh, and then after saying this, Michael adds a few other things. This having learnt, thou hast attained the sum of wisdom. So this is all of the wisdom that you need to know. Hope no higher. Don't try for anything higher. Though all the stars thou knewst by name, even if uh, you... Is that what it means? Yeah. Uh, even if you know the name of every single star and the name of every angel and all of the secrets of the oceans, and if you even if you know everything about nature uh, in heaven, air, earth, or sea, even if you enjoy all the riches of this world, even if you control the entire world as your own one empire, so don't hope for any of this. Your only hope should be to follow God. Only add deeds to thy knowledge answerable. 
So yes, you know all of this now. Now the only thing you have to add is action. Deed is action. So you know it, but you also have to actually follow these rules. And then add faith, add virtue, meida, patience, temperance, which means mo uh, moderation, shi, uh, zong yong. Add love, which will be called charity. Uh, and is the soul of all the rest. It is the most important thing. Then will wilt means will. Then wilt thou not be loath to leave this paradise. If you do all of this, leaving Eden will not be a problem because you shall possess a paradise within the happier far. If you do all of this, even when you leave paradise, you will carry paradise with you. This is the reverse of what Satan was saying, right? Uh, I can make, I can turn hell into heaven with my own mind. But here, Michael is telling Adam, you can carry paradise with you if you follow God. So it's the opposite. So the question is, does the poem fit this ending? Personally, I think no. Because like, it's true they should not have eaten the forbidden fruit, but God knew that they were going to eat it. That was part of God's plan. He knew what was going to happen and he let it happen. So like, why should they keep following his plan? And it's true. The next part of God's plan is to send down his son to save all of mankind. But between these two moments, there's a lot of suffering in human history. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a very good plan. But yeah, this is also an open debate about this poem. After writing 12,000 lines, does the can you really say that the lesson of the entire poem is just this part? Or are there even more ideas in the poem that don't fit this conclusion? You can think about uh, how the poem portrays Satan. How do they deal with uh, love? Adam's love for Eve, Eve's love for Adam. How do they use that in their relationship? Uh, and various other ideas. Yeah, I think the ending is maybe a bit too simple to conclude the entire poem. OK, do you have questions about uh, these five points? All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, I will introduce the midterm exam.
OK, the midterm exam. The midterm exam is an open book, open Internet, one week take home online essay question. Uh, so let me give you the general rules and then I will show you the question. Uh, and if you want to ask me anything, you will have some time to ask. So uh, the, the, these rules apply to the midterm exam and the final exam. Uh, before the final exam, I will re remind you once again. So first thing, the exams have deadlines but no timers, which means you can start the exam and submit your answer. You can use as much time as you want as long as it is before the deadline. So there's no limit like two hours or whatever. Uh, and the specific time is. Today after. Class. To next Thursday midnight. Second one. Your answer must be an English essay with multiple non itemized paragraphs. There's a lot of information in this one. It has to be in English. It has to be an essay. With more than one paragraph. And it must be non itemized. What does this mean? Itemized in Chinese we call this Dian uh, or Fen Xiang Don't do that. I only want paragraphs. Don't uh, do like one, blah, 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 two, blah, blah, blah. And don't use like bullet points, Dian, blah, 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 Dian, blah, blah, blah. Right? Give me paragraphs. Also, please do not use subtitles and colons. I actually have a negative example for you here. Here, bad, right? Example answers, and this one is bad. So don't do this. This kind of thing. Don't do this, right? It's a subtitle and then a colon. Right? Don't do this. I want complete, coherent essay with multiple paragraphs. Uh, third one. If the question has options, you must choose exactly one option. They are open ended, so if there are options, you can choose any option, but you can only choose one. You cannot say, oh, both of them make sense. You cannot say it depends on the person. You have to choose one. No, the next one, if you do not answer the question or you answer it in the wrong format, so you don't follow these rules, you will get a 20 out of 40, which is 50%. The maximum score is 40, uh, and if you don't follow these rules, you will only get 20. Um, this number was very carefully chosen. In this course, the midterm exam is 40, the final exam is 40 and attendance is 20. So if you fuck up the midterm exam. And you fuck up the final exam. And you miss some classes, you will fail. If you uh, miss up, if you mess up both exams, but you come to every single class, your final score will be 60. So these numbers were very carefully chosen. Uh, of course, the best situation is to just follow the rules. Um, next one, you can write your answer somewhere else and then copy and paste it into Moodle. So you don't have to start writing in Moodle. You can write it somewhere else and then put it into Moodle. But please give me the text of your answer. Don't give me a link to a Google Doc. Right, give me your actual answer. Next one, uh, you can submit as many answers as you want and I will give you the highest grade. So like if you submit 
and then later you think of something that you it's very important you forgot to say it you can submit another answer and I will only give you the highest grade. The exams are open book. You can use any resource except other people, but you can talk to me. So you can use the handout. You can watch the videos of our course. You can go to the library. You can go online. The only thing you cannot do is talk to other people. Don't talk to your classmates. Don't talk to strangers online. Don't talk to Tsai Renjie, right? Only yourself. But you can talk to me. If you have questions, you can talk to me. Next. Um, this is an open ended exam. There's no right or wrong answer. So your grade will depend on the format of your answer. So you must give specific evidence from four different locations in the assigned text. Not four pieces of evidence. Evidence from four different locations. If all four pieces of evidence are from the same page, that is one location. You need four locations. Or more, you can always do more. Um, in the for the final exam, we are also going to watch the movie version. You cannot use the movie. I'll remind you next time. Uh, and when you provide the evidence, please tell me where it is in the text. In parentheses next to each piece of evidence. Uh, for a play, so if you want to answer the question about Tis Pity She's a Whore, please give the act, scene, and line numbers, and maybe the page number. So, Diji Mu, Diji Jing, Diji Hang. For a poem, so if you want to talk about Paradise Lost, please give me the book and line numbers and maybe the page number. And then the final exam will be about a novel, so for that, just give me the page number. I'll remind you next time. So again, we you can look at the example answers below. So this is a good answer. Uh, this is a play, so you can see th uh, we have the evidence quotation mark. To quotation mark, this is evidence and it's taken from scene one line 39 to 46. It's right next to the evidence. Here we have another piece of evidence. It's taken from scene five line eight. Right, so always give me the location right next to your evidence. Now let's take a look at the bad example. OK, we have the play. And then. No evidence, this is just a summary. And so there's also no location. In the climactic scene, God's hold an aging. OK, which scene? Which lines? Right, there's no uh, location for this evidence. Uh, so this bad example would get only 50 percent. OK, next point. This is open book, open Internet. So if you use information from other sources. Again, next to the evidence, right beside the evidence, parenthesis, the name of the source and the location. So maybe the web address, Wangzi, maybe the page number, maybe the timestamp, Sijian Suoji, right next to the evidence. If your evidence or information does not have a location or source, I'm going to pretend that it does not exist. If you don't give me a location, it does not exist. 
And then finally, plagiarism, copying, cheating will earn you zero. If you don't uh, use the correct format, you will get 20. If you cheat, you will get zero. Uh, so don't talk to anybody except for me. And if you want to use information from somewhere else, you must give me the source. If I find that you have copied something without a source, even for the smallest things, even if you think it's not important, even if it's like an introduction, and I can find the source, and you did not tell me what the source is, that's copying and you will get a zero. Uh, this has happened before. A uh, student uh, wrote most of the answer themselves, but at the beginning they were too lazy to introduce the story, so they copied the summary from somewhere else. No, don't do that. Now, some of you may have noticed that there's one word I did not mention. ChatGPT. Uh, and the reason is, um, I don't think it makes a difference. If you use ChatGPT to write your answer and you just copy, paste, and then hit submit, your answer is going to suck. You're not going to get very good score. In fact, you might not even get a passing score. So even if you do decide to use ChatGPT, you still have to make sure that your answer follows these rules. Okay, do you have questions about this? Uh, for some of the students who came here from my film literature class, I'm sorry to repeat myself. <laughs> uh, and then here we have, if you're interested in why plagiarism is such a serious issue, we have an article in Chinese. We have some example answers. Uh, none of the information in these answers will be useful, but you can look at the format. Uh, and then let's look at the exam question. Or questions, sorry. Answer one of the following sets of questions. You only have to do one. Number one. Consider the positive and negative effects of the incestuous relationship in Tis Pity, She's a Whore. Do you think the relationship is worth it? Why or why not? Number two, consider the doctrine of original sin from Satan's rebellion to the salvation by the Son, as presented in Paradise Lost. Do you think this doctrine makes sense? Why or why not? Uh, and then just a reminder, if you answer both sets of questions, I will only give you one grade, the, the better grade. Um, and then below that, we have a really, really big white box. Don't worry about trying to fill the box. It is an infinite box. If you fill the box and you keep going, the box will keep growing. Um, this is really big to encourage you to put as much information down as you need to. It's to, to encourage you to write more, but you don't have to fill the entire thing. OK, do you have questions about uh, the exam questions? OK, so the rest of today, you can think about how you want to answer these questions. You can. You can choose which question you want to do. You can start planning uh, and you can after the bell rings, you can start inputting your answer and I will be here to answer your questions if you have any. Um, finally, if you need a handout, there are still extras in front and if you have not yet signed in, please come sign in. Oh, sorry, uh, next week. I am going to introduce the new unit and pass out a new handout.